So here we go. Welcome to another edition of the Itches Town Profiles. And this week, we're discussing Herman Horridison. I'm joined by Dan once again. We had a great chat about Boncho Gwenchev the previous week. And of course, this is a series where we put a spotlight on former town players and talk about their, their time at the club, key moments, highlights, and all that sort of stuff. Um, Dan, Herman Horridison, when you hear his name, see pictures, of course, that iconic moment, which we'll get into later. But um, what, what, what's your memories of good old Herman? We'll talk about that that celebration. I, what comes to mind with him is what it's just a warrior, a, 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 re, a fighter, and um, a very very hard man and a very very good footballer. Yeah, the Icelandic um, brute. He um, yeah, do, do you want to mess with him on the pitch? You, you can. There's some, so many different pictures and there's loads of different highlights of him just being a, a mean fighter, but um, a good player as well. And we'll get into that. Um, let's talk then, Dad, about him joining the club, first of all. A record fee back then. Uh, of course, got beaten a year later. But £4 million town splashed the cash on him from ASC Wimbledon. Um, what's your memories back then? 2000, August 2000s, our first season back in the Premiership back then. Uh, George Burley was probably just adding different players just to improve the squad as they were playing top flight football, playing lights against, against Man United. You know, Arsenal, Liverpool and all that sort of stuff. Spurs. Um, what's your memories of when he first signed? Of course, before podcasts, before, you know, there was just newspapers, those are the days and all that sort of stuff reporting on it. But what's your memories of him signing, first of all? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's probably the best ever time I've had as an Ipswich Town fan, probably that summer of 2000. Um, obviously, we just won promotion, we just won at Wembley. Um, and it was it was just brilliant times at the club. And what was interesting about the signing of Horizon was that he, he played a bit in England before, um, obviously. And, yeah, the season um, before, we had played Brentford twice in the League Cup when we were beginning to really fly and we he played against us then. And when we signed him, it was... We hadn't really made signings like this before. It was a, it was a big money signing, um, £4 million, as you say. And the great thing about George Burley, for me, was his ability in the transfer market at that point to be able to sign a player. And it was a different kind of player because he was coming in to replace the Tony Mowbray shaped hole in the defence. And we were, you know, the club, the team was stepping up, but we hadn't spent money like that at all. Marcus Stewart was the, the big signing we'd made before them. So four million pounds was a real statement of intent and indicative of the budget we had um, and, and, and you know, buying in a player to replace an absolute icon um, at Ipswich in Tony Mowbray. So, and there's a story about Horidison when, you know, he, he, had, he had played Northern Ireland and Jim McGilton in the summer before that season. They played in the friendly. McGilton was in his ear. We knew that we were scouting him. And when he eventually signed in his first day at Playford Road, apparently, uh, Horidison walked into the dressing room and Jim McGilton just said to him in front of all the lads, so you're the famous Herman Horidison, are you? And, you know, it's just, he knew at that point, it was like, okay, you know, I have a bit of a reputation and I've got something to prove. So, um, and he did prove himself. He did prove himself, definitely. So he was... Um, Big, big signing at the time um, and a lot of responsibility on his shoulders as well. Yeah, um, and of course, it's been spoken about many times. There's a great documentary that good old Andy Warren did on that 2000... Um, no, that's the playoff season. Ignore that. But that's a great video to watch anyway. But of course, 2000, 2001, Town finishing fifth in the Premier League. Damn, what a season for a lot of different players that campaign. Of course, Marcus Stewart, the key one, scoring all those goals. But Herman Ryerson was part of that team. Um, what did he add that just improved that squad and just that full season as a whole he added so much on the pitch and actually he added a lot off the pitch on the pitch what he gave us was he could play left wing back he could play left back he could play center possible and he was as hard as nails so what we did in that season which was which is why we came where we came and shocked a lot of teams. We tactically changed things up. We were very, very flexible. And his debut at White Hart Lane, we lost 3-1 to Spurs. He was part of a back, uh, th uh, he was in the 
kind of centre back. Um, he he just brought an element of he was a, of strength and toughness and experience, and he was a hard player who could pass. But equally, he was he he could do the dirty work in the back four. He was really solid at left back, and he was actually really good going forward. So he you know he he was. The, he linked up brilliantly with a player we had called Jamie Clapham. And that team was so good. We had so many partnerships over the pitch, players that could work with each other. He was absolutely instrumental in that, Aridas. And he he was such a good player that he let us change formation. And um, he was like a really fierce competitor. And he loved the crunching tackle, um, which is, oh, I loved him for that. I just love that kind of player. Um, and he had this kind of quite distinctive, when he ran, it was kind of quite high knees running style and like a fist pumping style of play. He was, he was like an all action player, kind of Scandinavian warrior. And he came in and he just, he settled in really well. I mean, it, it was just an, an unbelievable season, the, what, what we did. Um, and he was a massive part of that. And I think, as well, you know, if you look back on Herman's career, he was definitely one of the people off the pitch that not afraid to get stuck in, not afraid of a social. You know, him and Fabian Wilnis bonded brilliantly. He was a bit of a ringleader in a good way about, you know, getting out and about and really contributing to the club. Bearing in mind, of course, he'd come from Reykjavik, then he lived in London and he kind of moved out to Ipswich. So it would have been a big change for him. And he embraced all of that. And, um, you know, he he was someone definitely that contri contributed at all his clubs, particularly Ipswich, as a, as a character that is well loved. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, character sometimes. I think just in dressing rooms, you need characters. And I'm sure he's definitely one of those. Um, a cult hero. We mentioned Boncher as a cult hero, but he's another one who always gets mentioned on different lists. He, he's definitely a cult hero. A lot of, lot of fans do love good old Herman. And uh, let's talk about then the iconic moment, the, the moment that always gets mentioned when you hear Herman arise. And that picture of him jumping in the stand, North Stand end, when he thought he scored, but it wasn't his goal. It was Mark Birchall's goal. Mm. Um, what's your memories of that? Uh, against Bradford City and in the Premiership. Um, yeah. It's just an iconic moment, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember it. He dived in exactly where I sit now, but I wasn't there at the time. I was sitting on the halfway line with my wife-to-be, and we watched us beat Brad for 3-1. He had scored uh, not long before in a 3-2 win at Man City. So he'd already scored, but he'd never scored at home. Um, and we never scored from corners back then. Like now, basically. Like now, we, we hardly scored at corners. And he, he scored at City from a corner, and then he just rose up front of the north stand, headed it down. No one, no one could tell it had flicked off Birchill at the time. And it was just this, it was packed house. And it was just brilliant. He just ran into the crowd. He just, just like, that just didn't happen, did it? It was just like, that just doesn't happen. And he just stage dive into the north stand. I think everyone was just like, what has he just done? And he just lay there, kind of with the adulation of a cheering north stand as we... We, we, we won that game. As a, and it was another big game as we were going for Europe. It was a massive game. But he obviously, he hadn't scored at Ipswich. And he still hadn't scored at Ipswich when, you know, the famous story is obviously Mark Birchill got the goal and it kind of brushes off him as it goes into the goal. And and actually, George Burley and Herman Ryderson were getting a train down to London the week after because he got fined from the yeah. FA and he got a booking as well. But I mean, he cemented in pl his, his places. He was like immediately a cult hero for, for that. Um, and uh, it was just, uh, yeah, fa yeah, just brilliant, br brilliant, brilliant moment in a brilliant season. Yeah, uh, I'm going to bring up the picture. Um, <laughs> and you just, I just love the stewards. The stewards just watching, he's going, yeah, he's going to just let him enjoy it. And you just got everyone's face just seeing like a, a town player jumping in that stand. It's just amazing. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it's like, imagine how mad you go when you score a goal and you, you go mad enough in it with any goal. You go mad enough if it's a big game. And then you're going mad and the players running into the crowd. I mean, it was, it was just, it was just him. It was just like, um, he did things a bit differently. Maybe it was the Icelandic thing, but he had no fear. It was just an instinctive bonding of him and the crowd. It was, it was wonderful. I wish I was in there. 
Yeah, I'm sure. Um, if anybody's watching and um, who are in that crowd, who's in this picture, let us know because I'm sure you had to really catch him because he's a big he's a big boy, as we know. We've said he's a Scandinavian big lad. Um, but yeah, that's an iconic picture. I'm sure you know that should be at uh, that should just be somewhere at Portman Road somewhere. That, that just that iconic picture. I don't know if it is because of course recently we've um behind, you know at the Sir Boy Robson stand, the North Stand, there is loads of iconic pictures. I'm trying to think if that picture's there or not. I can't remember. Um, but if it isn't, then why isn't it art? Because um, that is an amazing picture. Um, now let's stand. Let's talk about the second season in the Premier League um, yeah. relegation. But you know, European nights, beating Inter yeah. Milan, going to different places. Um, Herman scored one of his goals, one of his three goals um, in Europe. One of them, of course, was against Helsingborg. Um, what's your memories of those European nights and just that season as a whole? It's a disappointing end, but it is what it is. It was. I've got a lot of memories of that, those two seasons. So I remember, obviously, we came, um, you know, fifth and Burley won manager of the year. And we all we all know what happened the season after. It, it, it all end, ended a bit sadly for various reasons. But that 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 season afterwards was fantastic. He The thing about Herman is he did actually score, finally score at home in that season. We lost 3-2 at home to West Ham, but it was when we were renovating the North Stand. And it was. I remember him scoring, and then it was like he kind of. You, you're not. Gonna, you're not going to be running into a building site and whack your head on a load of scaffolding. So he did actually score, and then that was against West Ham. And then the, the game afterwards, um, I remember the trip to Helsingborgs really clearly. Uh, uh, yeah, it was just very, very welcoming hosts. Um, Mostly all the Ipswich fans from what I can remember staying in Copenhagen. Um, went over on the day. We drank a lot. We had a we had a good laugh. I didn't have a ticket for the game, but I managed to get him and my mate into the home end, the Helsingborg's home end. So I was at the other end to where all the goals were. We could see all the uh, Ipswich fans down the other end. They gave us a bit of a run chasing Helsingborg's. They were all over us, and Burley changed it around at half time. And he he scored him, uh, yeah, uh, a, a really important good goal on that European run. I just remember, you know, sitting in the home end and watching these crazy scenes. And Haridison had whipped off his shirt as he wheeled away towards the crowd, and he, after a volley, um, yeah, and it was just uh, you know, a, a brilliant, brilliant memory for everyone that was there and watching at home. It was live on BBC Two as we carried on that amazing European run. I mean, unfortunately, you know the, um, you know we did go down that season, and um, that I mean, what was it? I always remember about Herman as well was, you know, obviously we got caught out financially quite badly. The club, um, not only losing the Premiership revenue, but the bus, the ITV Digital going bust. So we were in a tricky place. But he stayed with us. You know, he stayed with us the next season and he was on a big wedge of money and he stayed with us that season in the championship um obviously before he he left us and moved on but 127 games i think it was and three goals but and i tell you what also about herman Ryerson was he was not he was a he was just a really good player going forward as well there's some uh, fantastic footage of him in the Premier League, particularly with Marcus Stewart's hat trick at Southampton in front of Sven Goran Eriksson, when Stewart was really close to getting picked for England. Haridison's quality on the ball was just unbelievable for a six foot three Icelandic defender. So he did a lot as well and kind of assists as well. And um, yeah, it was, you know, it was it was a very sad time at the club. And obviously with with Herman, I, funnily enough, I remember his last. You know, he came as a reputation with loving a yellow card. He hardly got any. He didn't really get many cards for Ipswich, funnily enough. Um, but his last away game for us, he got sent off, which I kind of think is quite a nice touch in some ways. It, <laughs> and he actually got, we lost to Bradford 2-0 and he got a straight red for, he had a he had a running battle all game with another ex-Ipswich icon called Gus Ulenbeek. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he was him and U uh, Ulenbeek and Horidison were at each other most of that game at Valley Parade, and finally Horidison got sent off, and that was the last. After that, what happened with Horidison was that he um, he left to join Charlton, 
um, up back into the Premiership. But he he it was only for like Charlton only paid eight hundred grand for him, and there was like Ipswich would get another hundred grand if Charlton weren't relegated from the Premiership. But he could he could move he moved to Charlton outside the Premier League window because we were in administration. Um, but he wasn't allowed to play for them. So basically he got sent off in, in March and then he had like a couple of months off and he, he had left us, but he, he, he didn't play for Charlton for a couple of months. And um, obviously he moved on with, with other players, as it was like Matt Holland and, and Herman. And again, you know, you look at you look at all the clubs, all the clubs that Horizons played for. They loved him at Charlton. They loved him at Portsmouth. They loved him at Palace. They loved him at Wimbledon. He was a true cult hero, and he had a he had a brilliant career still in the Premier League after he left us. So um, yeah, he you know, and, and I think as we were talking about off air before, you know, he inducted into the Hall of Fame as well not long ago. Yeah, twenty nineteen, he got inducted to that, and you know, you've got to be a decent player at the club, or just being a cult hero in general. And uh, yeah, you mentioned that Pompey won the FA Cup with them um, when they won the FA Cup under Redknapp and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, he, he he started the trend of players going to Charlton. As you said, Matt Holland joined them. Then, of course, Darren Ambrose signed from it as well. And Darren Bent. It was like, it was becoming Charlton Town pretty much because like, all of our players were there. And we're like, stop signing our best players. But, of course, administration yeah, and stuff. Yeah. It's a really good shout, that. He actually, um, he did come back and play one more time at Portman Road. It wasn't for Charlton. It was for Pompey. Uh, obviously, when, when, when Pompey got... Um, when Pompey got relegated after they won the FA Cup, he came down to Ipswich and he played left back. Uh, they won 2 0. And I remember who else? David Nugent scored for Pompey. But uh, he was playing left back that day and he got a really good. He was up against Connor Wickham. And he got, he got, he got run about the first half, but he kind of he won the second half and Pompey won. But I remember him getting a really, really good reception. Um, and obviously, I mean, the other. The other thing about Herman Ryderson is, um, is the fact that he's he got he's got relegated from the Premier League a, a record five times. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't reckon he was the kind of bloke he was quite happy in the summer. I reckon he was always a bit sulking. Um, but you know what? You know that's that must that must have hurt him a lot. You know, you can imagine how much that hurt him to be relegated from all those different clubs. But he didn't appear to affect him he, he was he was a he was just very very consistent consistent player and not just what i would also say about herman was finally was he was a real hard nut he could take it and he could give it out and you need players like that you know you do need them that they probably don't see them as much today in modern football um i'm not saying you're you're dirty or anything like that, but you've got, you know, you've got to be prepared to get stuck in. And um, whether Ipswich ha had many players like that, I'm not sure. Whether we had a reputation for like that, I wasn't sure. He he definitely brought something different to the club, and he was he was he was brilliant, brilliant player. It was brilliant. Yeah, I think that's a perfect way to end it, Dan. Um, the Herminator. <laughs> Herman or Iderson, um, some great memories from Dan and um, what a cult hero at the football club. Let us know in the comments down below your memories, your thoughts on good old Herman. We'll be back for many more Extra Town Profiles videos soon as well. Thanks again, Dan, and bye-bye for now.